So inshallah, continuing with our series, the Divine Conversations or the Quranic Conversations. Today, inshallah, I want to share with you, it's a very short story. Basically, there is just only one, just or two lines of conversation that takes place back in the time of Bani Israel between two different groups of people. And in essence, this story actually teaches us, the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two powerful lessons. Because you have to wonder and you, we have to really ask ourselves, stories like this that happened thousands of years ago, there must be a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put these stories in the Qur'an. Stories that you and I will recite till the day of judgment. There is a, probably a reason behind it. So let's go into the story. The story is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wanted to test Bani Israel. And this is something that He would do often. He wanted to test their loyalty. He wanted to test their obedience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes mention of this in various places in the Qur'an. At this particular moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a very important instruction to Bani Israel that you are not allowed to fish. You're not allowed to put your nets out for fishing from Friday night to Saturday night. This is the time, this is your, your day of sacredness, this is your day of worship, and you are not to put out your fishing nets to catch any fish. Now, it just so happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to test how far they're willing to go to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah destined and Allah put in place this, I mean, this was Allah's plan, that the fish would come often when on Saturday. So throughout the entire week, the fish would not come as much as on Saturday. But on Saturday, when they're told not to put out their fishing nets, then that is when, they that is when the fish would come. So what they did was that, they said that let's try to create a hila, okay? Let's try to create a loophole in the system. We're not going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but let's try to find a system, a loophole in Allah's laws. So what they did was that they said, we're going to put out our fishing nets much in advance. We're not, we're not committing a violation, but we're putting our fishing nets out in advance. And the fish is going to come. They're going to catch our fish. We're going to use it for consumption purposes, for economic gain and so forth. And we're not violating anything. Now, the idea was that you know that these people in Bani Israel knew that the fish would come here at this particular time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want them to fish. The fact that they were doing something that is wrong, first of all, which tells us what? To try to find loopholes in Allah's system is a crime in itself. To try to find loopholes and to try to twist the haqq. This is something that we often see happening at time to time. That we're, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something haram. We're going to twist it a little for our own gain, for our own advantage. And we're not committing a violation. When we twist the orders of Allah, when we twist the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that twisting in itself is a crime in itself. So this is what Bani Israel did. Now at that time, three things happened. There were three different groups at that time. One was that group who was committing the violation. The second group was a group who told them that what you're doing is completely wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you understand. You know the wish and the desire of Allah. You understand the mansha of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not want you to do this. Why are you doing something like this? So they were doing Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar. Then you had a third group. Then you had a third group. The third group was going back to, was, they were going not to the first group who were coming in violation. They were going to the second group and saying, bro, my own business, basically. You understand? What they're doing, let them mind their own, let them do whatever they want to do. You're not the one who are committing haram. Let them do whatever they want to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he highlights this in the Quran. First of all, he says, وَاسْأَلْهُمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ Oh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ask them, your Sahaba, about that group of people, this, this city, or these people, these, these dwellers, who were living on the shore, near the shore. When they committed a violation regarding their day of Sabbath, that the fish would come on Saturday, and it would not come throughout the other days. Allah then says, This was Allah's way of testing them. 
Now, where is the conversation? In the next ayah. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ One group of them said to the other. Who is telling who? Group number two. Who is telling that this is haram, this is not right. They're telling group number one, the violators. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ No, in fact, this is the third group. The third group telling the second group. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ لِمَا تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا لِلَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا Why are you trying to give them advice? Let them do whatever they want to do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ When they forgot about their true purpose, the purpose, one of their responsibilities was to stop anything that was wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when they ignored the warning they were given, we saved those who forbade the evil. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved group number two. And he punished the wrongdoers severely because of their disobedience. But what about the other ones too? When, when in their ignorance, when they persisted in doing what wrong they were doing and what they were forbidden to do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that they were turned into monkeys and they were turned into apes. Then in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ma'idah, قُلْ هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَعَنَهُ اللَّهُ وَغَضِبَ عَلَيْهِ وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُمُ الْقِرَدَةَ وَالْخَنَازِيرَ وَعَبِ الطَّاغُوتِ Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about changing people's faces into monkeys and apes and pigs and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this. Now, there's two key important uh, pieces of lessons here for us. First thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Bani Israel in terms of their money. How do they earn their money? And by the way, just like they were tested, the Sahaba were also tested. When were they tested? When were they tested? In the Battle of Tabuk. They were tested when? In the Battle of Tabuk. Because the Battle of Tabuk took place at a time when the Sahaba were waiting for the entire year. These people were waiting on the week, on a weekly basis. The Sahaba were waiting for that one time in the entire year where now they can pluck the, great, uh, the, the dates. They can take those dates, get them from the trees, and sell them in the marketplaces. At that time where the dates become ripe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala you have to go to Tabuk. No questions asked. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Bani Israel, Bani Israel failed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Sahaba radiallahu ta'anhum, they passed. And by the way, in Tabuk, if you remember the whole story of Ka'b al Malik radiallahu an, there were three Sahaba radiallahu anhum, wa ala thalatatilladina khulifu. Three of them who, got, who stayed behind, who never traveled with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for Tabuk, they were boycotted, literally boycotted by the Muslims for approximately 50 days. The Prophet ﷺ did not talk to them. The Sahaba did not converse with them. They were left as if they were all alone on the island by themselves, although they were living in a very hustling and bustling place known as Medina. But this was their punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise for all of us, Allah has made it very clear. Money is something that we all love. But just like Allah tested Bani Israel, Allah is putting us through a test also. This is how you can earn money. And by the way, you will see that one of the most lucrative ways of earning money often, not all the time, but often they will come from haram sources. Yet today, yet today we find so many Muslims who are engaged in haram businesses, haram sources of earning money. Why? Let me just earn the money today, tomorrow I'll make tawbah. But the reality is that when you, when you opt for that, that style of making money, no one stops. There is rishwa that takes place, bribery that takes place. There is riba that takes place. There are people who take loans, they don't return them back to other people. There are people who take money from others and they don't show up ever again. There are so many ways that today in our Muslim community, people are earning haram income, haram money. And they're doing it what? In the name of Islam. 
or they're doing it. Why? Because I'm in a desperate situation. I understand there, are, there might be times of desperation, but times of desperation does not allow a person to have a haram income. So that is why it is absolutely important that one of the key lessons that we learn from this story of Bani Israel is Allah tested them when it came to earning money. Allah will test us also when it comes to earning money. The second thing that we learn from this story, which is very prevalent within our Muslim community is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he punished the group number one because they were the violators. But Allah also punished the third group too. The ones who were going to group number two and saying, why? Just mind your own business. Why do you have to interfere? Why do you have to fix things that are wrong? Just mind your own business. You don't have anything better to do? These third, this third group were also punished. What does that teach us? Right now, today also in our Muslim community, wallahi, there is so much wrong that is taking place. Whether it's in families, whether it's in the community, whether it's amongst people and so forth. And we know, we know what's going on. Yet, usually, what is our response? Our response is wallahi, like group number three. Our response is like group number three. You know about it, just stay quiet. It's none of your business. It has nothing to do with your family. I shared with you some stories in the past also where people, they see haram things being done. They see other families potentially, they could be harmed by other families. And they know, they can go to the family and say, you are about to be harmed by this family. But they usually stay quiet. Why? Because it's not my place to speak. Brothers and sisters, this is one of the things that is, wallahi, destroying our community. And in this society especially, why can we not speak up the truth anymore now? Because people are going to become demonized. In this society, wallahi, I be, I'm very blunt about this. There are people who are staying quiet. They don't speak the haq anymore. Why? Because what are some groups are going to say? Why, if I speak up, I may get canceled in my society. If I speak up and I speak the haq, then someone is going to spread something about me on social media. And wallahi, all these people who spread this kind of fitna, they have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But especially in times like this, if I sit there and I say, I'm too scared to speak the truth. I'm too scared and afraid to speak the truth then guess what? We are also part of group number three. We don't realize this. We might think that, yes, I have some iman in my heart, but if I'm too afraid to speak the truth, then we belong in group number three. And group number three was also punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran when he talks about لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ These people, Bani Israel, they were cursed on the tongues of Dawood and Isa Why were they cursed? What crime did they commit? They saw the wrong taking place, but they were too afraid to speak up. Or because of their companionship. This is my friend. If I go and I tell him or I tell her that what you're doing, sister, what you're doing, brother, is haram. Don't do this. Don't do this. Then they will cut off all friendship from me. My friendship in this situation, we believe our friendship is more important to us than stopping them from the haram. That is what we're showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And imagine if this is what we're showing to Allah, what kind of a face are we going to show to Allah on the day of judgment? So that is why these two important lessons are learned from this story. And once again, why are they mentioned? Because we see even today, the Muslim ummah is indulged in these two problems. These two sins, these two crimes. The amount of ways that people are acquiring money and through haram sources is number one. But number two, the biggest problem that today we have in our Muslim community is that people, there are people who want to do the right thing. But because, because you have this third group type of people who are saying it's none of your business. Or it's the other way around too. What, what is it? You know, we're living in a, in, a, in a very liberal society. Islam needs to be changed. Islam this, Islam that. And they want to change Islam. They want to modify Islam and so forth. And in doing that, they also are part of group three. And they suppress everyone else. So that is why it's very important. If I see something that is wrong, if I cannot go and talk about it, if I cannot go and address it directly myself, then I need to get other people involved in the community to address the issue. But staying quiet, by the way, staying quiet 
is you putting more fuel to the fire. This is one thing we have to always keep in mind. If I see something that is wrong and I stay quiet, Allah will ask me. Allah will ask us, you knew, yet you stay quiet. And Allah will punish those kind of people. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in all circumstances, He always makes us from group number two. The group that always does Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahi al Munkar. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to always make sure that our sources of income are coming from halal sources. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما